Welcome back to the RCBC SJ Sit Down Series podcast. I'm Madeline, your host and SJ president. Joining me today is my co-host Isaac and another SGA officer. Today we have another special guest, Director Andrew Eaton, who oversees the public safety officers at RCBC. We want to know more about how our campus is kept safe and about the new ID cards. How is everyone doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great as well. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So before we get into the questions, we want to know a little bit more about you. What are your personal hobbies? I have a gentleman's farm. I have three horses and I have hay equipment that's older than me that I I do about 10 acres of hay uh, for the horses and that keeps me busy. That's my main hobby slash side job, I guess. (laughs) I love horses. Horses are so sweet. They are. They are. I have spoiled horses. (laughs) So what made you work with college students? Interesting. So I retired from the state police in 2013, New Jersey State Police, and I wanted to coach basketball. Mm -hmm. I was a basketball player in high school and college, coached uh, youth in recreational basketball, and my dream was to coach at a high school or college level. So when I retired in 2013, there was an opportunity to become uh, assistant coach for Bronson County College, and I took that and talk about influencing lives of people. Um, I did that for three years with uh, head coach Keith Crump and had, a, a, I believe, a very positive effect on, on multiple young men. And uh, it's nice to see them where they advanced to and uh, went on to play. And now they have their own families and mm-hmm. I keep those discussions going. So that's how I first became involved with college uh, uh, age students. And then um, after three years of coaching, there was an opportunity and an opening here for an assistant director of public safety. And I submitted my resume and interviewed. I, I guess I did okay, because they hired me. <laughs> and then a few, so. years, a few years later, and again, uh, not only the students that we have an impact on in public safety, but also the employees, the public safety officers. And then I became director uh, a few years after that, and the rest is history. Where did you get your level of education from? Oh, my dad, mostly. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the best education. Uh, my mother and father did a good job raising us. I had four. I have, there's two brothers and a sister. Um, so I did go to college because of basketball. I don't know if we would have been able to afford it at the time. and mm-hmm. um, But it turned out well for me. Uh, full scholarship to uh, University of Delaware. And I ended up graduating from Kutztown University mm-hmm. with a degree in, can you de- guess my degree? Public safety? <laughs> it's a good guess, but no. Criminal yeah. justice. That's a, another great guess, but no. I have a degree in graphic design. Okay. <laughs> yes. So when I graduated, I, uh, I did work for a Fortune 500 company, a printing press, uh, doing their pre-press work. Okay. That's cool. Um, it was, everything was going from uh, manual to digital. Right. And nobody really knew how to do the digital, and they were getting jobs on uh, floppy disks. You remember them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's how I kind of jumped out, and then the state police uh, had a class, and I uh, took the took the test, and the rest of that is history. <laughs> awesome. What is the favorite part of your job? The favorite part is mentoring young people. Life has not gotten easier with uh, social media and technology. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to make things easier. It really hasn't, so there's a lot of... It's overwhelming is what I'm seeing. Yeah. And the opportunities are much more uh, available. Yeah, that is true. So, so mentoring the younger officers um, that want to become involved in a public safety career, that's what I, I strive for, and that's what really motivates me. What are your everyday responsibilities? Boy, I wear many hats here at the college. Uh, <laughs> the, the prime responsibility is making sure we have a safe uh, environment for mm-hmm. learning and, and working. Um, there's a lot involved with that behind the scenes. You know, administratively, uh, just from hiring and, and training and scheduling and all those things um, that we do, making sure they run smoothly, make it look easy. What services do public safety officers offer for students? Again, we provide the safe environment for learning. Right. And the object is to make it look easy, like nothing's going on, right? So, right. again, you take your custodians for granted until the trash can's overflowing. Right, you don't realize that it's it's emptied every day, and somebody it's that somebody's job to keep on top of that. Same thing with public safety; you don't realize until there is an issue. 
Mm-hmm. So when we have no issues, sometimes I tell people about the things that do go on here, and they're like, I had no idea. We have a safe campus. I'm like, it's not by accident. Right. Uh, I work with a lot of great people over in the public safety department that are motivated and dedicated. Uh, specifically, we offer, uh, we do parking enforcement. When the campus is packed, it's nothing more frustrating being a little bit late for class and can't find a parking spot. Mm-hmm. So we try and keep that moving. Uh, we do jump starts if you have a dead battery. We do uh, lockouts if you locked your keys in your car. We oh, just, yeah. I always get locked out of my car. Imagine that. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. <laughs> we patrol the campus uh, both on in, in vehicles and on foot through the buildings. Uh, if you'll see the stations in every building, we, we put them in um, during COVID. Strive to have an officer present in every building at those desks uh, to respond to calls in those buildings or and or to help students and staff out. That, that approach the desk. Uh, we do safety escorts. We have a safety escort program if you're feeling unsafe or there's some domestic violence issues going on, which we do uh, have a few cases a year, provide safety escorts for staff and students. We have a lost and found. I really want to promote that. Um, if you lose something, a lot of people turn phones in, earpods, ear pods, uh, earbuds, iPod, I, I get AirPods, AirPods. AirPods, yes. <laughs> Clothing. So Check with the public safety department. It gets entered in the computer, and we have it uh, saved over in, in Evans Hall. Okay. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. So can a student be a public safety officer, and what is the process of being a public safety officer? So, yes, uh, we, we heavily recruit within our criminal justice program and students at large to become uh, part-time public safety officers. We have a, a training program um, that we run everybody through. Uh, usually takes three weeks to get through the whole thing. Um, depends on your commitment. If you can give three days a week as a part-time officer, you'll get through the training program faster, obviously. Uh, but we cover things like uh, the rules and regulations, um, workplace harassment, uniforms that are handed out and how to, how to wear them, how to take care of uniforms, uh, access control, uh, the cameras on campus. So we, we fuse technology and human assets to form uh, our, our safety plan here on campus. Could you tell us more about the new um, ID card program that's going to be implemented? I can. So we, we've always had some form of ID uh, card access, um, even in, in when we were in Pemberton, and it was for some more secure locations. Um, when we moved all of our operations here to Mount Laurel, um, that system went away. So it started off with providing higher level areas with card access. Then it rolled out. The president said, look, I want to roll this out to every building. And we did. And it was uh, for faculty and staff. And then the president said, okay, let's take another step. And we're going to provide everything for students. I want to lock the buildings down and provide all students and staff and everybody that's part of our community with access to our buildings. And it's been a, it's been a interesting rollout trying to merge all our technology, all our systems to make them talk to each other. Um, the doors to each academic building are going to be locked and secured. Every student, full-time, part-time, three plus one, a life, our seniors in their life program, everybody will have a way to get into the building. Can a student go and exchange their current ID for one with a chip in it, or do they have to get a new picture, or how does that work? Marketing has a, a, a um, they're rolling out their... Baron Pass, I think it's Baron called. Baron Pass, but yes, we need a new ID, and on the back... If you're, if you're questioning whether you have a new ID or not, you turn your card over and there'll be a series of numbers, lower right-hand corner uh, of your ID. If you don't have those numbers, then you need a new ID. And you can go to Student Success Center and we'll process you okay. and hand you a new ID and you'll have access uh, for those buildings. Awesome. Now, Student Success Center will be unlocked, the, the main door, but we'll, we'll always have a, a public safety officer there. All right the desk. Then will the students that are in the three plus one program in their senior year get one of the new IDs also? Yes. So the discussion right now is how do we confirm people that are going to be here next year? Right. So it, it, it's incumbent upon the student to say, yes, I am coming back. I'm a student here. Currently we're working with, so answer your question. Yes. Three plus one students will have uh, access uh, okay, as well. Good, because I'm a part of three plus one. Yes, you will have the access. There's a lot of features in the, in the card access system, so you can really uh, fine-tune it. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's just going to be the buildings. It's not going to be enter- entrance to the classrooms. The faculty have entrance to the classrooms. Okay. And again, 
for our protection, we use high tech and low tech. So we have the card access systems, but you'll still see the magnets and the straps that we use on the doors. Right. Okay. So the instructor will come, unlock the door, put the magnet or strap in place. And so in case of an emergency, you can open the door, remove that low tech, and the door is locked. Yeah. Those who are in peer mentors, will we get access to all of the buildings instead of just one? Right now, it's set up so students will have access to all academic buildings. Now, health science is a little different because they're a more unique program. It's configuring the access levels. It's done, but we will adapt as we see the, the need and that is brought to us. So it's, we're building our system. We're not re- recreating the wheel, but we're building our system. That's super cool. So marketing has done a, a nice job with the rollout, and any information or you know, questions that need to be answered can be found at rcbc.edu slash barons. Pass. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you on today. Well, the pleasure's all mine. Thank you for the invite. How can someone get involved with public safety? Again, I love students that apply and become part-time officers. They really contribute to what we try and do at, at in public safety department. The easiest way, just Google RCBC jobs, but it's in the human underneath human resources and you'll see jobs available and we always have a part-time officer listing. Uh, please apply if you're interested. How many officers do you have currently working for you? That might be top secret. (laughs) We usually carry about 20 full-time, 20 to 22 full-time, and 10 to 15 part-time. But there's there's high turnover, uh, part-timers especially, students, they come and go, and I usually get two great years out of criminal justice students. uh, Makes sense. Part-time, because they're motivated, they want to learn. So the makeup of the department is... Um, I have retired police officers, retired corrections officers, retired um, people that have had a career in the public safety sector. So they are the mentors to the students that are learning in the classroom, but then learning the real life, hands-on, how to write a report, how to wear a uniform properly, what chain of command means in a department. I will say, and I've gotten feedback from other police chiefs and from former employees that have become uh, have a career in law enforcement that they've always had a leg up on the people that they're competing against to get these jobs. They always interview better. Their resumes look stellar because they have experience. So if you're looking for a career in law enforcement or public safety in general, apply, apply, apply. You yeah. guys do a lot to keep our campus safe. We do. We do. I guess, I, again, I work with great people that make me look good, which is kind of the job of every employee. Yeah. Kudos to you guys. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's all for today's episode of the RCBC SGA Sit Down Series podcast. Thank you to our guest, Director Eaton, for talking about public safety and the new ID card system. Thanks for all you do to keep our campus safe. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much and for having me. Tune in next time for more interesting talks. I'm Madeline with my co host Isaac signing off.